I can't believe I didn't make that. Would have been an A. All right, quiet, please. It's Friday. Friday's usually short, short and sweet. Today is no, no different. Oh, yeah. All right, what's up? Here's what we got going on. Uh, we're coming around to grab any bit of homework. Now, some people have said, hey, do you want me to send this on Teams? Do you want me to bring it to class? I said, what, whichever one you like to do. So some of you may have posted on Teams your homework. Some of you may have it right now. You have it right now. Grace is walking by. Go ahead, Grace. Walking by with a basket to collect your homework. The rest of you, we're going to get started on our final last shape. Thank you. Our last shape. I don't know why the book does this. It doesn't make sense to me. Our last shape. We have a. Our last. Our last shape will have both a surface area and a volume in one class. It is two formulas. It is the only two formulas for this year that I can't actually prove to you without calculus. So you will not get an explanation of where these formulas come from. It is the one time that I can't be a really great math teacher and say, well, yes, I can show you where these formulas come from because you don't know calculus. Uh, however, if you'd like to return to my classrooms uh, in high school, and you're like, hey, Mr. C, remember in eighth grade when you said you can't prove it to me, and I'm in calculus, now prove it to me. I'll prove it to you. You can email me. Okay. okay. All right. Or college if you take uh, calculus in college. Uh, by the way, uh, I want to do that because all calculus classes eventually show you the proof of this, which is when I learned it. And I was like, oh, now I see why my math teacher never proved it to me. All right, quiet, please. Let's get going. All right. So uh, these formulas are the, uh, well, the volume formula is very unfriendly. Like it involves ugly fractions. Um, it's also hard to wrap your head around why this is true. Uh, like I said, you just have to accept in eighth grade that it is true. All right, it is a worksheet. I'll hand you the worksheet at the end of class. Uh, as always, I'm going to make the same statement I made from the start. If you show up on test day without a calculator, I don't think that you're going to be able to do well on this test. Yes, all of this can be done by hand. I didn't design the test to be done by hand. I designed the test knowing that you had a calculator in your hand. Therefore, I didn't feel obligated to give you nice, friendly, easy numbers. So I didn't. You're going to be squaring. You're going to be multiplying, adding, subtracting, weird numbers. With a calculator, it is no big deal. Shame on you. I will not be handing out any calculators on test day. You show up on test day without a calculator, then I guess, well, I'm not going to enjoy the fact that you're going to do poorly. But I will show no pity, no mercy on you, right? Uh, you also have other friends from other classes. You know you're going to take a, a test that needs a calculator. Get a calculator. All right, here we go. Uh, write this down, please. Box 1A. We've already had the definition of circle, collection of points on a flat surface that are all the same distance away from a given point. Right? The only difference between that definition for a circle, boys, the only definition for uh, that's the only difference between that definition for circles and a sphere is spheres are not on a flat surface. So first off, let's draw a sphere in box 1A, draw a circle. Well, that's not a sphere. To make a circle into a sphere, we draw an ellipse around the middle. An ellipse is a squashed circle. It's got a far more mathematical definition than that, but that will suffice for today. Uh, you draw a ellipse around the circle, and since it's a sphere, it's three dimensions, and we can't see the back of it, the back of your circle needs to be so that's what it should look like. But they're not drawn in. Okay. Are we drawing that? Yeah. Yes, draw me one sphere. Now you know how the sphere will be depicted for homework and whatnot. Now, as you can see, occasionally, and I gave you some, occasionally 
uh, they will put some shading to help you see that it's not a circle, that it's a sphere. I find the shading sometimes gets in the way and makes it hard to read. Write this down, box 1B. Here's your definition. It's the same as the definition of a circle, except it's not on a flat surface. It's the collection of points in three dimensions that are the same distance away from a given point. Put it on a flat surface for this definition, you make a circle. Don't put it on a flat surface. In other words, all the points that are the same distance away from a given point, you get a sphere. The collection, that means all the points in three dimensions that are an equal, the same distance from a given point. Circle, we draw a center point, we measure away from it 10 centimeters on the board. Then 10 centimeters above, below, left, right, upper left, upper right. Do that an infinite amount of times, you get a circle. If I allow myself now to go outwards from the board in three dimensions, and I make one 10 centimeters, and then upwards 10 centimeters, downwards 10 centimeters, you'll get a sphere. Spheres. <gasps> Spheres. All right. Half of the sphere is called a? A circle. Who's, who's a car person? What is Dodge famous for? What is engines? Why is it called a Hemi? Because it's made up of. If you look at the top of the pistons on a Hemi, it looks like this. Yeah. That's why they're called Hemis. All right. All right. Nice try. All right. So in box number two, draw me a sphere. We're going to label the parts of a sphere. It turns out that the parts of a sphere are the same as the parts of a circle. So somebody give me a part of a circle. A diameter. Draw a diameter of your sphere. Uh, well, that would be a line that goes through the center. Okay. Well, there's your diameter. Yes, I picked the same one you picked. I said a sphere has everything that a circle has. What else does a circle have? Uh, a radius. So a radius would go from where to where? From middle to middle. We got a problem with uh, a sphere drawn in two dimensions is that it's flat. This isn't flat. It's easy to, to uh, picture in your head what the radius of this would be. It's harder to draw this. So what we generally, on most pictures, not all the pictures, when we draw the radius, we generally go from the center to the ellipse. Not because we have to, but just because it looks better. I can draw another radius that goes from here to right here. And you're like, well, how do I know that touches the surface of the sphere? And I say, well, you got to trust me. See what I mean? I mean, that's not very convincing that that's the radius, okay? However, that radius, well, that's convincing. That's why, generally speaking, if you see a radius on a sphere, they'll generally draw it right here or we're in place of the red diameter line right there. Okay, doesn't have to be. Any other parts of a circle? Uh, the surface area, maybe. The well, we're gonna calculate circle. surface area in a second. Area. Area would be the distance on the inside. Uh, uh, distance. The Lunar, amount. Lunar. Circumference on uh on the earth is called what? Uh, surface. The what? circumference oh. is called what? The equator. Or a line of longitude. Oh, okay. A line of longitude. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to write that down. But yeah, this squashy lips right here, that's your equator. Okay. The reason why uh, your latitude lines, remember latitudes go from the equator to the North Pole, and they're parallel to each other. Uh, latitudes get smaller as you go north. The line that goes around the equator, uh, the uh, lines of longitude, they are all the same distance. Okay? Uh, and just for you science nerds out there, the Earth is slightly squished. Okay? So it's not a perfect sphere, but it's slightly. Uh, by the way, if we have time, our last calculation, I don't know what you're doing, but you're already doing bad stuff. Stop it. Uh, a last calculation we have time will be what is the uh, uh, volume of the Earth? All right, two objectives today, surface area and volume. It's two ugly formulas. Well, surface area isn't too ugly. Uh, the two are very not rememberable. You'll remember pi r squared, but you'll probably forget these. 
I know that on the CMAS, the state test, they give you a formula sheet with this on there, not for sixth grade, right? I don't think you're going to take the sixth grade test. Though. I think you're going to take the, no, I think you are going to take the sixth grade math test. Yeah. Well, then there you go. Don't worry about it. Okay, so write this down, please, Bob. I said I was not going to prove it to you. This one is hard to wrap your head around. It turns out that if you have a sphere and you want to calculate the air, surface area of it, it's the area formula times four, which is a pretty wild, bold claim without proof. So it turns out that four circles make one surface area of a given sphere. Kind of hard to wrap your head around. It's true, though. Yes. I literally just said you have to trust me. Okay. It is the most unsat. I know that my math teacher never even went down this road. She just said, write this down. Right? I, 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 I think I understand. Oh, God, no. It's it's calculus. It's, yeah, I know. Oh, it's, it's a circle. Of three. Yeah, but I'm just saying it's... It's hard to wrap your head around that the surface area of this thing is equal to one of these times four. Well, you take one sense. of these reds, times it by four, and you get the surface area of the whole darn thing. That doesn't make that makes sense. Sense. I agree. Yes, that actually makes just sense. Doubled, you just doubled, uh, yeah, but we're talking about this is the surface area. This is the area of one. You take that, you multiply by four, you get the whole darn thing. It's true. You're going to have to wait until you take calculus for it to be proven to you. All right. So you simply write it down. You accept it as true. Right? You understand that you got to wait a couple of years for this to be proven to you. The calculation is not too challenging. It's pi r squared, which we've already done, times four. Okay. Volume. Well, there's still a four involved. It's divided by three, even more strange. Not really. Okay. Volume, now notice the radius is not squared, the radius is cubed. Okay. So volume is four thirds times pi r not squared, pi r cubed. If someone makes a mistake with surface area and volume of a sphere, if they forget that the area is squared, four pi r squared. And for volume, it's four thirds pi r cubed. If you have it written on your resource card, it's hard to make the mistake. If you think you'll remember these formulas come test day, you will make the mistake. All right. We're ready to do some? How about we just wait and we do some? Okay. All right. Everybody has the two formulas written down. Woe unto you, you show up on test day without a calculator. All right? Because you got to do this whole thing by hand. All right. Hey, I got a sphere. How do I know it's a sphere? Uh, it says it's a sphere. Okay, uh, I have a radius listed of two centimeters. So it says volume and surface area. So one at a time. We'll do uh, surface area first. So it's four steps. Identify the shape. The shape is a. What's the formula for surface area of a sphere? Four pi r squared. Step three is you plug in the number. What's the only number I need? I need the radius, which is. Okay. With a calculator, you type it in exactly the way it appears, and you get the answer. Doing it by hand. What do I do first by hand? Uh, Exponent. Uh, Two squared is? Four. Uh, four times four is? 16. And 16 pi. times pi is whatever that is, is your answer. For those of you that are doing it with a calculator, well, you type this in exactly the way it appears. Four times pi times two squared. Everybody knows where the square button is on their calculator? Yes. Sir. Okay. So it'd be a pretty easy calculation. Did you guys get 50 centimeters squared? Oh, by the way, it's surface area. So the answer squared for units. We okay? Yeah. Too fast? Okay. What's the only thing we need, Kai, in the formula to find out? What's the radius? Plug that in and you're done. Now, type this in exactly the way it appears and then don't hit enter. I want to look at the calculator. Type this in exactly the way it appears. I did this for my seventh graders and they couldn't wrap their head around this. I said, take your calculators, type it in exactly as it appears. And then I would say, give me your calculator and I would see nonsense. Let's see if it works. I can't find the square, the square button is right here. And you won't have a problem because you can type it into your calculator. Hit enter. 
Did you get that? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Volume. We already identified as a sphere. What's the formula? Uh, we come to our very first problem with a calculator. How do you type in fractions with a calculator? There is no three here. That's a cube. All right. I'm going to give you two explanations. By the way, uh, I throw in two, and then we're going to do the calculator. I'm going to give you two ways of doing this on a calculator. Make sure you're paying attention. I got to split you guys up. These two? Yes. I just yes. never see them. It's like, yeah, why did it take it. half a year for you to do this? All right. No, Kai. So just start paying attention. It'll be okay. All right. I said two ways. Jenny, you got your calculator? Okay, I'm sure you got to have practice. You're not going to need practice on this without calculator. All right, here's two different ways. Way number one with your calculator, four thirds is open parentheses, four divided by three close parentheses. You see what I did? And then type in pi times two cubed. So where's the cube button? All right, most calculators have a cube button, but it's hidden somewhere and you got to find it. Others do not, right? If it doesn't have a cube button, it will have a, remember what I called that? Carrot. Has a carrot key. Some calculators have a, like, uh, I can show you where the cube button is on yours, Kai. But uh, most of you have the scientific calculator. So how do we type in pi? We type in pi, then we put two, carrot key, three. Yes? Now there are cube buttons on some calculators. Yeah, but is it's, that it's that cube. It's cube. So you have to the second power. So you need to use once you type it in. Once you get the two there, you need to hit this key, oh, okay. and then to the third power. Okay. You got to hit the math math button. Hit math. It says math, and then you'll see to the third power which is right. What do you want, Howard? Mm -hmm. Oh, but you just cube pi. Good job. Oh, Dude, how about we? How about we cube uh, two this time? Uh, by the way, for the smarty pants out there that really don't want to press two keystrokes to do two cubed, guess what they can do? What's two cubed? Absolutely not. I'm gonna throw things at you. It's eight. No. It's eight. So if you can correctly, which we've just found out that you can't, if you can correctly cube in your head, it saves you a bit of key. But just be careful. You do have a calculator hand. Let it do the heavy lifting. All right. Who's lost on this? All right. I said there were two ways. Not all calculators, but some calculators actually have a fraction button that you can literally type in four over three. And I'm not going to talk about it other than to say that some calculators can do this, right? And most of you probably know if you have that calculator. Only a few of them will do that, though. All right. Questions on this? Oh, by the way, what's the final answer? Uh, what's the final answer? Oh, 33.493333. Uh, I'll round in this whole number. 30, 34. 33. 33 or 34? 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34. 34
If you do this thing called calculus to a sphere and you put this little disc right here, you get to prove that the formula is volume is equal to four thirds power cube. Since none of you understand what that's why I don't show it to you because it makes no sense. And it's also not provable, right? To a, to a, a, a rigorous extent until you get the calculus, which is why all math teachers, myself included, just say, you got to trust me. It's the right formula. All right. Here we go. Two calculations one more time. How many people have already done box four already? Let's check to see. All right. Back up here. Back up here. All right. Let's. Hey, never hit your clear button ever. I think it entered my because it says enter? No. Yeah. <laughs> we need to go back and work on our letters, Kai. No. All right. <laughs> Up here, uh, Kaden, since you're being a smart aleck and I'm not able to say those smart aleck remarks, now you tell me the formula. Dang. Surface area is what for box two? It's right From box two. <laughs> Four pi, four pi r squared. Is that a radius or diameter? Is that a radius or diameter? All right. So we plug that in for radius. Grab your calculator. Tell me the answer. For those of you doing this by hand, what do we got to do first by hand? Uh, radius, of power. Power. radius of second power. Four squared is? 16. 16 times 4 64. is 64. So whatever 64 pi is, is the answer. It's and the answer is? You're going to say yes or no. Uh, okay. Landon's shaking his head that you are correct. Huh? I got 272. I got 262. You did something wrong. I got 264. Or divided by three. All right. Hey. I'm not oh. saying it's a hard calculation, but even doing it by hand, don't multiply by pi until your last step if you choose oh, to do it by I hand. Okay. Save the pi because that's what typically makes it complicated unless they give you a decimal radius. All right, volume one. Uh, Winter, what's the formula? Uh, four, four with three pi r squared. Uh, square. Cube. Oh, cube, cube. Cube. Okay. I said before seventh and eighth grade, I didn't really know the difference between square and cube. I knew I knew a two and a three, and I knew what to do mathematically, but the words just never sunk in until high school. And some of you will have that problem as well, too. All right. Uh, well, the radius we know is four. Uh, winter, what's four to the third power? 16. 16. So if you're doing this by hand, it's not 16, that's four squared. No, 64. If you're doing this by hand, look up here. You put 64 over one and then multiply straight across, reduce if you can. I get a big pumpkin number 256 over three. Now, finally, if you're forced to do it by hand, this is not a friendly calculation by hand, right? Uh, 256 times 3.14 divided by three. It's not a friendly calculation. With a calculator, it's no big deal. Going back to this, right? Here's how it's typed in your calculator. Open parentheses, four, division symbol, three, times pi times four to the third power. Now four to the third power is written as four carat key three. Yep. Okay, and then you get? So guess what's gonna happen Landon when you don't get this on the test and quiz or quiz the test. I'm gonna be very upset because are you getting it right or wrong right now? You're getting it right. Exactly. So what is the disconnect between getting it right in class and getting it wrong on the test, I'm going to claim this. You show up without a resource card, you're not pulling this formula out of your butt, hopefully, <laughs> right? Um, it's just not that uh, memorable of a paper. formula, okay? Also, show up without a calculator? Well, you're doing this sucker by hand. Christian, you question or stretching? Okay, someone else question? Do we feel confident with this? Yeah. All right. Oh, it's, it's half of it, yeah. Let's uh, switch to, uh, oh, just remember if I give you the diameter, don't wait until you get to your answer and then divide by two. You've got to start from the beginning I with know. the radius. I know. 
All right. Wait, it said Wait you didn't give us the answer. Yeah, I'm answer. skipping because it's a short day, so I want to get to the other oh. thing. Oh, yeah. I thought it was well, should the air. Whoa, wow. Oh, yeah. This is it's not a, 523. It's a big number. I got 523. That's not that big. Type so, it into your calculator again. Yeah, one, one, four. I can show you. Okay. It's 14, not 5. Yes, you are. All right. The very last thing is I want to do this uh, one calculation as we're out of time. Because it's a fun calculation, is to volume of the earth. All right, let's do this calculation. So it turns out, listen, please. Uh, a lot of things at science class are only measured metrically because metric system is way easier than imperial units. But let's do an imperial unit since we deal with that in everyday life. Turns out the radius of the earth is about 4,000 miles. About. It's a little bit less. With a calculator, this is no big deal. Okay. First off, we can do lots of things. We can do surface area calculation pretty easy. We can also do volume calculation. Uh, let's do the volume of the earth. How many cubic miles? Hey, how far is it between us and those houses way over there? Yeah. Less than a mile, right? Probably closer to three quarters, half a mile. A mile is long, 5,280 feet, right? We're finding out how, think about this. We're talking about cubes. So if I draw one cube, that is a mile by a mile by a mile, that's one mile. That is farther than us to those houses way over there. Does We're finding out how many of these cubes, right? Rubik's cube, right? How many I'll of the it. Rubik's cubes, if this Rubik's cube was a mile long oh on its edge, how many of these fits inside the earth? Two. For those of you that think the earth is not that big, let's do the calculation. The earth is fine. What's the number? Two, 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 two billion. 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 Zero, zero, zero. Trillion, 262 trillion of these. And, and then remember, this isn't this size. E-learners, I'm holding up a Rubik's cube. It's not this size, it's a cube that's a mile on edge. There's 262 trillion of those, a mile. That's a long distance. A trillion? We don't have any trillionaires, right? We have billionaires. We don't have any trillionaires, right? Start early. All right. Uh, someone do the calculation for surface area of the Earth. Somebody do the surface area. Remember, surface area, SA, is equal to 4 pi r squared. You have a calculator in your hand. I know. It's not that hard of a calculation. Wait, maybe you got it. No. Here's your radius. Now do the four pi r squared to that. What did you get? You got the scientific notation. Give me the number. One nine seven eight five seven. So let's see. There's thousand. So what's the surface area of the Earth? Million. That's million. One nine seven billion. Eight five seven million. So notice there's a big difference between surface area and volume. Volume is in the trillions. Surface area is in the millions. As the sphere gets smaller, those numbers get closer together. Not in actual size, because remember, once measuring. Volume once measuring surface area, but the numbers themselves get closer and closer together. Okay. It turns out that when the numbers get very small, like when the number of the radius is one, the surface area number will be larger than your volume number. That's because you're squaring and cubing one, which is still one. And remember, volume it's four thirds. Surface area is just times four. So you get a seemingly larger number. It's not larger because they're two different complete measurements that are different from each other. One measures surface area, one measures volume. One is measured in cubic units, one is measured in square units. So occasionally I'll get students like, wait, 
my surface area number is bigger than my volume. You're like, you can't compare surface area and volume. They're two completely different measurements. So don't get hung up on which number is large or small. Although as the radius gets larger, volume number will get larger. That's because you're cubing the radius. You're only squaring the radius for surface area. What's up? So, um, it's kind of random, but I need to who got surface area cylinder off the top of your head? I got it. Top of your head. Top of your head. Uh, it's two, not on the board. Two pi r h plus two pi r squared. So two pi r h. Two pi r h plus two pi r squared. Oh, okay, yeah. For me, if there's one surface area that is memorable, for some reason that sticks with me, I don't know if it just flows well together, but it is somewhat memorable. Yeah. Now I need everyone else to be hushed so I can hear these questions. Hey, I'm going to go back to the start of class here real quick. We'll look at the calendar. We'll talk about how it's going to work for next week. How are you doing that so fast? I'm just holding the button down. Oh. Too fast. All right. So next week, we just finished our last section. We get two formulas from it. Did anybody is up on the count? How many formulas we have? No. I've lost count as well, too. It's lots. Uh, we will have two days. Now, listen carefully. Listen. We're going to have two days in review. Uh, I have two ways that I could do it. Either I give you half on one day, half on the next day, and then I'll have someone absent on one day. They'll skip the review, or I give you this big honking review on both days. So I will give you the big honking review on both days. So how many practice problems do you need on every single shape? How about four? Four. If I give you two, then maybe you just by coincidence get the answer right. If you, I give you four, you get it right four times. There's no doubt you got this down. Okay. Plus, I need to show every single possible variation of each one. So rectangle, square, that sort of thing if you're doing... Uh, surface area, uh, I'm sorry, area of a, of a, of a uh, quadrilateral that's a rectangle. So I'll give you four questions on each one. Now we have lots of shapes. So this is going to wind up into be a very big packet. On the test, I'll probably only give you one question on every shape. So on the review day, yeah, it's probably going to be, I don't know, 40 or 50 questions long because it's a lot of stuff that we've done. I do have to warn you, what generally happens on the test is you don't read the question. If I show you a circle and you're doing area, nobody misses it. If I show you a rectangle and ask you for the area, no one misses it. The issue is volume and surface area. I'll have a kid that will see the cylinder and they'll give me the volume when I ask for surface area or vice versa. It's two completely different formulas. Okay, four steps. Identify the shape. Pick the right formula. You're going to have two formulas for cylinders, one for volume, one for surface area, and all the 3D shapes. So it's a lot of formulas. It is a calculator test. Someone will show up without a resource card or without, without a uh, 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 calculator. And like I said, I'm showing no mercy whatsoever. It is your responsibility to be at the right time, at the right place, with the right gear. Okay? And for that test on Wednesday, unless there's, I don't know, anybody look at the uh, forecast for good weather-wise? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then the test will be on Wednesday. Um, and somebody's going to mess up. Usually happens. Maybe not. With, when it, I usually teach two classes, of course, two every year, but this time there's only one. Um, but usually between the two classes, there's that one kid that shows up and then they're like in tears because whatever. You know the test is on Wednesday. You know it's not the first period of the day. If you show up on Wednesday morning, you're like, oh, dear Lord, I've forgotten my resource card. Then go to your study buddy and make a quick one, right? If you forgot your calculator, there's enough kids around here, right? Hopefully you're friends with at least one of them. Ask to borrow their calculator. You're, you can't share calculators during the test. But there's a bunch of you right now that don't have a calculator in your hand because you forgot it. Okay? Don't be that kid. What's up? 17 formulas. Um, it's usually a bit more because we also have perimeters. And then we have... Um, um, when I leave it up. Oh, then we have a, a different form for squares as well, too. So it's a lot of formulas, right? It's a lot of formulas. Questions or anything we did today, which was surface area and volume of a sphere. 
Can what we, time do we get out of here? Can we rewatch the Mars rover land? Oh, get out of here at well, two minutes. Did they get video of the Mars? They, I'm sure that when they have video, I'll be very interested. But uh, as of last night, no. Last night, there's the, it was supposed to sign a picture about it. Well, they may, they may be up by now. So. They got a few pictures. Can we, can we look at them? What? Search them. Let's go on JPL website. All right. Any e learners? No one is present. Donovan, why aren't you here at class? Catch you tomorrow.